Has the new Matrice 30 piqued your interest? Are you in the market for a drone but not sure which one to get? Are you not sure how the Matrice 30 compares to the Matrice 300 or a Mavic? Stay tuned. What's going on everybody? This is Dave from Steel City Jones Flight Academy. Today we're very excited to bring you a brand new DJI Matrice 30 series review video. We really wanted to set out a goal for ourselves to give you the most comprehensive review video on this aircraft that you can find anywhere in the country. And I hope that we met that goal. You can be the one to decide that. And since we actually put the launch video out about this aircraft, we've been getting a lot of calls from public safety, inspection type of people in the industry wanting to know what does this aircraft do? How does this stack up against the Matrice 300? How does this stack up against the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and or a typical Mavic type of aircraft? So we wanted to take our time, get a lot of flights under our belt. We have a lot of comparison footage to show you on all this different aircraft to give you everything you need to know. It would be very easy for me to tell you that this aircraft is better than something or it is as good as something. And we, you know, we wanted to be very meticulous on our review and to not just give you opinions, but also to give you feedback and actual concrete data so that you can actually decide for yourself what aircraft is right for you. There's no doubt in my mind that this is an aircraft that really is a game changer for a lot of different types of companies out there that really can't necessarily afford something like this platform, but they want something more than a Mavic type of aircraft for public safety or inspection type of capabilities. So with all that said, again, our review video is very comprehensive. So to help you break this down and help you find, if you're looking for something very specific on features and functionality, we went and chaptered everything for you so you can see exactly where in the video on different type of subjects that you might be interested in. So I hope you can watch the entire video. With that said, let's go and get, get to it. So to start off with, there are three different versions of the Matrice 30. There's the 30T. T stands for thermal. That means there's a thermal element in this camera. Then there's the 30, which doesn't have the thermal element, and that is priced at a lesser expensive price point. And then there's the docking station. Now the docking station is something that cannot be added on or purchased individually or separately that's compatible with these first two versions. If you want the docking station, you have to buy that version of the 30T that's compatible with that. Now this is not gonna be available yet until later in this year, so we'll probably do an entirely different video, separate video on the docking station version when that comes to that. Now, we're gonna go ahead and talk about some of the new features, the functionality, and reasons why people wanna use the 30T over the 300. The number one thing that sticks out like a big elephant in the room is the price point. Even the price line of the 30T is significantly less than the 300 when you take everything into account, like buying an H20T camera, batteries and everything, it's significantly less. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that we're basically taking a lot of the Matrice functionality and putting it in a smaller, more portable platform that can be used in all kinds of different type of vehicles. So for example, you're looking at a fairly large size patrol car, but you can see that the officer is having a very difficult time he's not able to put it in the back seat. In comparison, the factory Matrice 30 case fits the patrol car with no problems with plenty of room to spare. 
Other improvements include a full HD FPV camera for the first time. And my favorite improvement over anything else that I'm gonna talk about today is the RC Plus remote. This is awesome. I've been flying for 12 years. I've been flying a wide variety of different type of remotes. And I have to say, this by far is my favorite remote of anything I have ever flown. Finally, when we had the M300 come out, you know, having the smaller smart controller was a bit of a disappointment. And I really personally do not like using smaller remotes with smaller screens. And I really liked out of the Matrice 200 and 210 series, I really liked the Crystal Sky displays. Now we finally have a seven inch screen, very robust type of remote, very intuitive that works very well with this remote. We're gonna talk more about this in a little bit. We're gonna go over this in full detail, but this right here is well worth it. Now, DJI is saying that this remote will be compatible with the Matrice 300 uh, probably later in the year, maybe early next year. Not quite sure the timeline, but that's very nice to see that they're gonna also be able to be compatible with that. But this right here, I think this is a game changer and we're gonna talk about this more in detail later. Another very important update that DJI did with the Matrice 30 is they did a new design with the batteries. You know, this is very similar to the Mavic 3 style batteries, but they are bigger. But right here, they have cooling fins for circulation with airflow to be able to help dissipate the heat out of these batteries. If you know anything about batteries with you know, aircraft, larger aircraft, you know, batteries can get hot very quickly. I have personally seen this work in person where we have flown this out 85 degree weather, 60% humidity, and a dew point over 60 as well, very sticky weather. And even at 20% battery remaining, where it's dissipating a lot of the heat out, the battery temperatures have been less than 110 degrees. So again, I have seen personally from my testing here, a lot of improvement in to keep these batteries at a lower temperature, which means the lifespan of these batteries is gonna be much better. So now that we've talked about some of the new improvements and features of the M30, let's talk about some of the things that the Matrice 300 can do that the Matrice 30 can't do. That's pretty important to distinguish. You know, I get flooded with all these calls asking me the distinction between the two, so we have to review those in this video as well. So for starters, the Matrice 30 does not have an interchangeable camera sensor. This is fixed to the aircraft. You can't interchange sensors. Where the Matrice 300 is completely modular. We can add LiDAR. We can add survey grade camera sensors. So we can do survey grade mapping. We can do payload drop systems. We can put tethered power stations on here as well. And it goes on and on. So this is completely modular. We can add all kinds of different payloads and camera sensors to this. And this is what it is. You know, for what it is, it's extremely good, which will cover all those features and functionality coming up. But we're, again, we're trying to distinguish all the things between these two different aircraft. Also, this right here is called the CSM radar. The CSM radar improves the obstacle avoidance immensely, which where this can go ahead and be able to detect thin power lines, cables, small branches, things of that nature, and works very well in nighttime, where a system like this cannot fit on here. And as of right now, they have not adapted a product like the CSM radar for the M30. So we are limited to what the vision system on this aircraft is. It is a very good obstacle avoidance system. It has four cameras on each axis, each side, an up and down and all sides as well. But again, we are limited to what it can do. And that means it really cannot work well at nighttime. And we are really have to be very careful around thin things, objects, thin cables, power lines, etc. when we're working with this type of an aircraft. 
So we talked about the payload system that we can put on the M300 and that this system cannot do. Let's talk about the overall payload capabilities. So we can add a total of six pounds of payload with this aircraft without any problems. But with the M30, we have a very small margin for payload and it's under 300 grams of payload that this can handle. So CZI, for example, has made a really special a, an attachment on here. It is a loudspeaker spotlight combination, which we'll talk about in a little bit that goes on top of here. But then that weighs less than 280 grams. So we're very limited on what we can add and attach to the aircraft with the Matrice 30. So obviously there's a difference between the sizes of these aircraft and that's why the Matrice 30 is more portable. However, with the Matrice 300, size can also have an advantage in terms of line of sight. And I don't see anybody talking about the differences between these two aircraft as far as the overall line of sight that we can see the aircraft in a realistic standpoint. Now, again, though this here has a big advantage over a Mavic because a Mavic gets, can get lost in the sky three, four, five hundred feet in the air, which is, this becomes an advantage over the Mavic. However, with the size of the Matrice 300, it is a bigger aircraft. We can see it further distances away. So if you're trying to do like power grid inspections where we got to do longer runs of, say, 15, 100 feet, 2,000 feet, and you still want to stay line of sight, this is a better aircraft for that type of consideration. Likewise, I really like using the landing gear as a visual reference when I'm further distances away. It helps me be able to see if the aircraft is sideways or if it's front to back. You can use that with this type of aircraft and obviously with the M30, it doesn't have land the gear and it is from further distances away over 750 feet away. It is a little hard to tell what the orientation awareness is. And this became more obvious to me when we started training with the M30 in our advanced flying courses where we actually teach how to be able to regain orientation from further distances away. And that's kind of where I really noticed that to start off with. So if you really want to fly further distances away, and on a single camera operation, you don't want to pass it to a second remote pilot, then the larger aircraft might be something to take into consideration. So let's break the aircraft down one step at a time. We'll start with the case. Overall, I think the case is adequate, and I was actually pleasantly surprised by what's going on here. I think this will work for some applications provided you don't need a second remote controller or more than six batteries in here. There's room for four extra TB30 batteries, and then you can keep two on the aircraft. There is a big storage area that you, you can put things in here like crystal sky batteries so that's not bad i think the overall the case is nice and heavy duty i think it will work for some people i am a big fan of the go professional cases and the hprc cases and you know if you need room for a second remote controller and more batteries i think that will be appropriate at that point but i think that overall i think the case will work fine now let's talk about the aircraft body and the airframe. I really like this design. In my opinion, out of the Mavic series and the Matrice 300 series, this is my favorite design. I really like it. It's so simple to use. All you got to do is just to be able to hit a button right there like that, and it locks right in place, and you don't do, need to do anything more. It's really easy to use and be able to get this up. You can get this really literally together in 10 seconds. Other changes over to M300 is that there is over here where the micro SD card is gonna go is now on the body and it's not on the camera itself. The battery compartment is very simple and easy to use. And you see these little orange levers here and when you turn them open, the battery will pop out and they're very easy to remove at that point and they can put them back in and you'll hear a positive click and they're locked in place. Very simple, easy to use. 
Also, like the TB60s on the M300, the TB30s on the M30 are also hot swappable. So we do not have to power down and power back up to be able to change batteries. Now, as far as the camera goes, the camera does not use any kind of gimbal protector or cover. To be able to go ahead and protect the gimbal, all you have to do is turn the gimbal straight up like that, put it in the case just like that, and that's good to go right there. Another interesting part about the aircraft frame is that you'll see the two back booms are higher than the two front booms. And that is because they want to be able to have the RTK puck antennas as high as possible so that there's no interference with any other things like we put a payload on top of here that way we're still good as far as height goes and that nothing in here is going to be able to block them so the only thing that i can see as a hindrance or um, something that's a little bit of an issue that if the camera is straight on view we can get to propellers in the shot a lot easier than the Matrice 300. And that is partly one reason why DJI specs that the pan range is 105 degrees only. Whereas the Matrice 300 is be able to go full 360 around, but that camera sits down much lower then this camera sits up more into the aircraft bottom of the pocket. So that's the only thing about that. And you can see the props in the shot with the FPV camera, as well as the wide camera and the zoom camera. But what's nice when we're going ahead and using the zoom camera, when we focus in and start zooming in, the props are completely out of the shot. But there is more of a limitation range on the pan side with the Matrice 30 over the Matrice 300. This aircraft is fully redundant and it also is able to perform emergency landings on three props. Now let's talk about the different aspects and features of the camera. Again, the camera is a non-removable payload and we have two different configurations, one with thermal, one without. So this is a 30T, and I believe that most people that are going to be buying this will buy the thermal option for what the cost is. And this has a thermal camera, it has a wide camera, it has a zoom camera. The zoom camera is 48 megapixel half inch CMOS camera, and the wide camera is also half in CMOS at 12 megapixels. We know there is a lot of public safety and utility and inspection professionals that are very interested in this camera's capabilities. So we're gonna give you a lot of different things to take a look at. So the first thing is, we like gauging the zoom performance in a couple different ways. The first one is really an overall capability of the zoom camera, what its limitation is. So to best do that, we have found to use this reading a license plate and seeing how far away we can read a license plate and still read it legibly and not where we don't have to be able to guess and try to say is that I really can't quite make it out. I think I know what it is. Uh, my test includes without a, any shadow of a doubt being able to read that license plate. So to start this test, we did the comparison on both aircraft. We were able to fly at 300 feet high and kept going back until we reached a limitation. With the M30, we were able to get very good results all the way to 900 feet. Once we started going about a thousand feet away is where it started getting a little too pixelated and I would say the sweet spot is between 900 to a thousand feet as far as the overall limitation for this test. So then switching over to the M300 for the test, we had no problems at a thousand feet and you can see how clear the license plate is from a thousand feet and we kept going backwards. We were all the way to 1500 feet and where it still read it very good. Right around 1600 feet is that limitation. So again, to recap, we're getting an additional, in my opinion, 600 feet of clarity with the M300's H20 or H20T camera on the zoom quality compared to the M30. Now, 
Do we really need that much zoom capability? I would say if you're really on public safety trying to use for surveillance, event monitoring, that would probably be where we want that extra push if we really want it. So we also did the test with our Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. And you can see the zoom capability is nowhere near either of these two aircraft where we really limited to about 75 feet away, maybe 80 feet away maximum for the same readability a comparative on the other tests. So to add on and expand on that test, we did another test as well. This time for more of a inspection type of application, and we used a cell tower to be able to demonstrate that. So what we wanted to do was we have a cell tower and we wanted to really take a look at the zoom capability at 200 feet away from the tower and then 100 feet away. So we started with the M31 first, at 200 feet away and then started zooming in and you can see the overall quality of what you can be able to get you can still be able to read good clear details on cables and colors and different types of conditions on there and you know you can still see where on some labels there's still some limitations as to what we can see clearly from a certain distance now we brought the aircraft in from a hundred feet away and then tried the same test and we can see that the aircraft again is clearer it's cleaner it's less pixelization and you can read in more detail into there and for the most part when you're really taking a look at cell tower inspections being a hundred feet away from a cell tower is no problem at all i think that is more than enough room for being able to be able to really see a lot of clear detail on a cell tower now, in comparison, let's take a look at the Matrice 300 at 200 feet away, and you can see some of the footage that you're seeing and how clear that is. Again, I think, you know, when you're overall comparing both side by side, you would be seeing that the M300's zoom capability is more clear. And when we go ahead and then re brought it into 100 feet away, you can see that it is even that much clearer. And you can see that there is even small labels and you can still make out the words on those small labels, which really then at that point, you can read anything or you can be able to see any amount of detail, including how much rust or surface oxidation is on the, uh, on the metal and are different surfaces. So again, it matters on how much detail that you need for your overall inspection to determine what you need. In most cases, the M30 would be more than sufficient. But when you need the maximum amount of resolution and detail, the M300's H20, H20T camera would be still a better choice in that application. The other note that you want to look at when you're comparing the zoom camera is when we are between two to four times zoomed in, it is at a digital zoom. And you can tell there is a small difference in the pixelization. And once it jumps up to five times zoom, it actually, the clarity gets a lot better. And from five times to 16 times zoom is the sweet spot. And that is when it's, it is an optical zoom. After 16 times, it goes to digital zoom. But even after it gets into the digital zoom range, you can still make out a lot of good clear detail especially when we're not zoomed in too much. So up to like 64 times zoom is a really good range that I think is gonna work well for you for inspection jobs. The new aircraft has a self-heating function that removes fog from the lens in foggy conditions. The smart low light function feature has imaging algorithms that are gonna automatically adjust the brightness based on the current light conditions. So now let's take a look at the thermal camera. The specs are all the same no matter what drone we're comparing, whether it's the M30, the M300, or the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. They are all 640 lines by 512 resolution, and they all do a very good job. Here is some footage that you can see comparing the Matrice 300 to the Matrice 30. Again, when we're looking at no more than say 120 feet high, 
you can really get very good resolution. Now, one other important thing to note is that we found that on the thermal camera for the Matrice 30, it actually starts out at two times zoom. But that two times zoom really is the same as a one time zoom on an H20T from our just going back to back to back comparing frame sizes. So overall, when we're trying to compare that and look at the different footage, that's why when you see X1 versus X2 on the M30, you'll see the differences between them. I want to try to compare apples to apples as best I can, but to be able to do that, we really want to look at one time on the H20T and two times on the M30's camera. Again, they both do remarkably well. We can switch color palettes the same. Both are radiometric cameras, and we have the full isotherm feature and functionality to be able to look at and we can actually tap our finger anywhere on the screen to get a measurement. And even when you go ahead and zoom in, we still got very good resolution to work with that's gonna allow us to be able to go higher in the air than 125 feet to be able to maintain good safety margins at nighttime. Now the range finder on the M30 camera is improved over the M300. With the M300, we can get about 17 to 1800 feet and then it becomes very hit or miss after that. With this aircraft, we have been able to record objects up to 4,500 feet away without any problems. And you can see, I'm showing you some tests right now where we had no problems being able to go over 4,000 feet and was able to track it very well. So that is more than two times better than the M300's H20 and H20T cameras rangefinder. Moving over to the FPV camera, DJI for the first time now has a full HD FPV camera at 1920 by 1080 resolution. It gets very clean imagery and it fills the whole entire image on the screen on a smart controller very nicely. Now, while we're still on the subject of the camera, we have to talk about one of the most commonly asked questions that we've been fielding on the phone for the past 45 days is, can this aircraft do mapping, can it do autonomous flights, and can we use the mapping for survey grade work? So not that long ago on our channel, we did a very comprehensive video really answering that type of question regarding the H20 and the H20T cameras. And this camera fits exactly in the same category as that camera. I don't want to talk about all that. You can go, uh, we'll put the link down below to be able to see that. But the bottom line is, yes, this drone can do mapping in autonomous flights. You can create 3D models through DJI Terra. You can go ahead and do photogrammetry with this camera. But the thing is, it's not going to give us survey grade accuracy. You're not going to use this camera for those type of applications. If you need to get down to a tenth of a foot of accuracy and you're working with a surveyor, you want to go ahead and use a different type of camera, different type of drone. This is not what this is for. Yes, it can do mapping. But to the degree of survey grade work and survey grade accuracy, I would say the M300 is a better choice or another different type of drone that might be in your price range for that application. One of the huge impacts that this aircraft is having on the drone industry is now we finally have a water resistive aircraft at a price range that we've never seen before. Previously, we've only had the Matrice 200 and 210 and the Matrice 300. And a lot of people just can't jump up in that price range. So a lot of people have been using Mavics, for example. But if you're an agency, like say in Boston, where half of the year it's either raining or snowing, that really limits what you can be able to fly in. So this is a huge game changer in that effect. And as you can see, I'm trying to crop in and zoom in as much as I possibly can in here so you can see all the water that we have on this aircraft as we just got back from flying and doing water resistive tests. 
So we went out and flew with three sets of batteries in the rain and parts of the rain, it was raining pretty hard. So we had a really good test here to be able to see how this aircraft performs. And I can tell you that it performed flawlessly. It hovered great and we flew this around in 10 to 15 miles an hour, just like any public safety agency would need to do in these type of conditions. And it handled outstanding. So we finally, with the Matrice 30, have a water resistive aircraft as far as what we need for water resistive and an affordable price. So now let's move on to flight performance. Again, we had over 50 flights with this aircraft where we put this through the ringer, all different types of flights with it. And I can say that Really, this is one of my favorite aircraft to fly. I feel that it handles very precisely, it's very stable, and I believe that with the M300's landing gear, that adds a little extra resistance to it and it doesn't fly quite as smooth as the M30 does with no landing gear. The M300 flies great, don't get me wrong, but I feel the M30 flies a little better. Again, you can see how we rolled and banked hard to our left and to our right. It handled very well. It breaks very well. Let's talk about wind resistance. The new Matrice 30 is rated up to 34 miles an hour wind. That's pretty good considering that the older Mavic Enterprise Advanced was right around 20 miles an hour. So that adds a lot of capability and that's almost as good as the Matrice 300, which we have tested up to 40 mile an hour winds in Florida. We took this up to about 30 miles an hour at around 400 feet in one part and it handled it great. Over the river of Pittsburgh and the three rivers, we had the aircraft flying around and right up around when we got very close to 400 feet, we saw about 30 mile an hour winds and it handled it very well. It hovered very well. It did not drop a lot in altitude, even without RTK, and it flew very well. My only, I wouldn't even call it a complaint, just an observation. I didn't feel that the aircraft descends as fast as some of the other aircraft. I would like the ability to be able to get down very quickly. Let's say if a, a helicopter rolls up on us very fast. Either way though, I think I, you know, I give the flying ability on this aircraft an, a grade of an A for sure. Again, one of my favorite aircraft to fly. And overall, the flight times that we got were right consistently at 30 minutes. Now, we tried both ways as far as a hover test, at, and we got 30 minutes at a hover test, and we were going ahead and just flying it around in soft circles, and we were getting about 31 minutes. Now, again, that means that from 100% down to 20%. Now, we're going to talk about the RC Plus remote that comes with the aircraft. And I got to say, I absolutely love this remote. And I am extremely picky in regards to remotes when I fly. We've had some public safety clients also fly it, as we'll talk about it shortly in the video. This remote, I have to say, was very well designed. I really thought they thought this out very, very well. Very intuitive with the Power2 app as far as how the buttons interact with the different features and functionality. On the left buttons, all we got to do is be able just to use the L1, the L2, or the L3 to switch between the wide camera, the thermal camera, the zoom camera, and or just to be able to go ahead and put a pin drop down. On the right side of the remote, we have the R1, R2, and the R3 buttons. And the R1 and R2 buttons can go ahead and go and zoom in and out very quickly. And the R3 button will allow us to be able to switch over to the FPV camera. Again, very, very easy to hit these buttons instead of trying to be able to hit a button on the display. And I like being able to have on these buttons to be able to do and switch between these things very fast. Also, what I love about this remote is down here on the bottom right is a little jog button that allows us to be able to very 
quickly adjust the zoom in more of a fine adjustment where it's actually going ahead and not jumping up or down so much it's just being able to fine tune that zoom adjustment and i really really like that again same features and functionality just like the regular smart controller with the m300 we have our tilt we also have our pan over here you can have a dedicated camera operator dedicated pilot and either one can be assigned to either one and the pilot then also has the ability to lock out anybody else to be able to take over the drone. Over here is also the mode switch, and now they're calling position hold basically normal mode, and then we have sport mode, and then also a definable mode, which can either be tripod or addy mode, same as the M300. It really does have a lot of improvements on here, and I really like what they did over back here as far as the ports and the covers of the ports, all these back here are much much improved I can't complain about this remote the only thing that I haven't been able to do yet is um, the aircraft does not come with a lanyard you have to buy that separately and I'm very in the lanyards are not available yet I'm very eager to be able to use a lanyard because it's a little heavier and a little heft to the weight so if you're trying to fly for like an hour plus you know your hands can get a little fatigued at times but overall you know the lanyard will cure that as well uh, this is really worth it and I can't wait to see what this is going to look like on the M300 when it's compatible with that later in the year. Now on the back of this remote we press this button in and this is where we can put an external battery just like the M300 smart controller on the back but this now is now all built into it so it doesn't stick out and this will give us as much flight time as we need getting those WB37 batteries in here. It does not come with one stock, so you have to buy them separately. The only thing that I would like to see a little better, it is a little hard to see in the sun. And to give you a comparison of that, we have built two different custom monitors for Steel City drones for these type of applications in the sun. And you can see how that compares to the RC plus of the DJI remote. So I would love to be able to see this sort of like the ultra brights on the crystal sky monitors, but overall I'm not complaining at all because of the features and functionality of it. I'll go ahead and use this all day long. And it uses OcuSync 3, which is gonna be compatible up to 15 kilometers away. And it uses now what's called quad antenna transmission technology for improved actual reception between the remote controller and the aircraft. Also new to DJI is the Pilot 2 app. And at first, I was using it with the M300 before we got this new controller. So it really was used to the Pilot 1 app for a long time. But now that we're using this remote, it totally makes sense on how this is working. And it's very intuitive on here. We still have all of our submenu settings. We have our health management system on here that we can be able to see everything very easily. We can go ahead and take a look at our flight logs very easily. We can do manual flights or autonomous flights. And we can also now log into a cloud service. So all that is extra on here. We can do all the updates through the smart controller or we can continue using them uh, through the Assistant 2. The overall setup and the update the firmware is a lot easier and more intuitive using the app in the new RC+. Plus. Another feature in the Power 2 app that's been improved is AirSense. What is AirSense? AirSense is an alert system that tells remote pilots when manned aircraft are nearby that we want to be alerted to. And in the past, on older systems, it would give us some false positive alerts where it would detect aircraft that say three, four, five thousand feet high that really are not a threat to us. Now, it kind of really has its own matrix now, like for helicopters that are nearby, that if they have transponders on them, it will alert us to that. As I mentioned before, this aircraft is equipped with RTK technology on it. And these are the RTK pucks right here. What is RTK? That is short for real-time kinetics. 
It is a commercial grade GPS system that when engaged does not use the internal GPS system and takes the compass out of the equation. It will fly more precisely, it hovers more precisely, and also will take the magnetic and electromagnetic type of situations out of the equation for us. We have to either use a DRTK2 base station that can be sold separately. That is a base station that you would set up on site. The second way we can use RTK service is through what's called N-TRIP service. And that is a internet cloud service that is going to have a base station somewhere in your state and be able to broadcast that real-time correction over to you through your remote controller and then the remote controller then talks and will engage the RTK. This is the BS30 battery charging station for the M30. This is the only way we can charge our batteries. And again, this will come with the combo kit. If you're purchasing a combo kit, you can also buy a separate one if you wanna add a second charger to your fleet. What we have here is the ability to put up to eight TB30 batteries in here, but it will charge only two at one time. Now, what's new for this battery charging station is now there is a three-way selector switch. We can put this in normal charging, where it charges all the way to 100%. We have fast charge mode that will charge up to 90%. And then also, finally, now there's a storage mode on here as well that will get them to 50%. So fast charge, we have seen them charge batteries in about 28 to 30 minutes. And the standard time has been about to, for us, about 52 minutes to be able to charge a set of batteries. So at one time, two TB30s and one WB37 battery at the same time. Again, it's nice and compact. It will consume 525 watts of power. So take that into consideration when you're, if you're trying to go ahead and spec an inverter, how much that you're gonna need. I would say a minimum of a 2000 watt inverter would be needed. Again, that's not a, a very large inverter. So that's, you know, that's pretty much standard that you're gonna have in here. Also for uh, accessories, we can have a USB-C and USB-A connectors on here to be able to do updates as well. So, and you'll see on here in the back of here is a nice little instruction sheet on the different things that you're gonna see for charging as far as the different colors and the different sequences on here. It's very easy to uh, follow and understand. Again, a nice, small, compact as well. I really like this battery charging station. Now, I wanted to include in this video what we have available on the aftermarket already for public safety. This is a very excellent piece on here that I highly recommend for public safety. This is a loudspeaker and spotlight combination. And it, plug, it just has a little bracket on here. It slides right on and it plugs right into the SDK port on the top here. And this works outstanding. And we actually, we flew it at nighttime. I had my son as an actor in the middle of a dark field. And you can see how well this stacks up. And it was very bright. Now, what's nice about the spotlight is it can also be set in sync mode with the camera. So when the camera is tilting up and down, the spotlight will synchronize with it. And also, we did a loudspeaker test as well. So for the test that we did, we were 400 feet away, 200 feet high, and really wanted to measure how loud it was away from us. So again, you can see that the aircraft's up in the air. I have the loudspeaker angling back toward our van, and then we actually play the siren, and this is what it sounds like. Right now, it can also do text messages and play back the text messages audibly. So we really highly recommend this as well. This is great for public safety, and I wanted to show that to you also well as we're doing in this video.
So if you're a public safety agency and you're still undecided whether this is right for you or not, we went out and talked to a couple different public safety agencies. We let them test fly this aircraft, get their thoughts, get their impressions on this and see what they thought. And here's what they had to say. My name is Michael Daly. I'm a patrolman with Ross Township. Even as a new user with really no experience with drones, I was able to pick, on it, pick up on it pretty quickly. Uh, they're pretty easy to fly. The camera is absolutely incredible, better than some of the surveillance cameras we have. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of uses for it. Just it's a little intimidating at first, but with, you know you're flying an expensive piece of technology with a lot of different buttons and stuff. But once you get used to it, it's it's pretty good. There's a lot of use for it with uh, any kind of active situation that that they'd really come in uh, use, especially with the video being able to record, being able to track. So yeah, I think there's a lot of, a lot of use for it with law enforcement. The new Matrice 30 is compatible with what's called Flight Hub 2. DJI has a software solution that allows the aircraft's video camera transmission to be able to be uploaded to a cloud server and be able to be viewed anywhere with an internet connection. And it has a lot of features and functionality to it. There's too much to go into with this already very comprehensive review. We will make a separate dedicated video, but the features and functionality are very robust and it gives public safety another option to be able to send your content of what's on the drone back to your command vehicle. For every purchase of the Matrice 30 or the 30T, it comes with what's called DJI Enterprise Basic Shield. That is a one-year plan. It's essentially a protection plan against crashes. So if this just crashes, falls 250 feet in the air, goes into a million pieces, all you have to do is box up the drone, send it back to DJI, and for a small deductible, they're gonna go ahead and replace the aircraft and they'll do that up to two times in one calendar year. So after the first year is up, it is renewable, it is a cost to renew it, but it is very reasonable considering the cost of the aircraft. So again, that first year is free of charge at no extra cost to you. It's a great plan. There's also what's called a plus plan. Most people who call us about the Matrice 30 ask us about remote ID. Does the new Matrice 30 come with remote ID? Is it equipped with it? What is the deal? So as of right now, and this is June 2022, the FAA has yet to clearly define what the manufacturer's specification requirements are to be able to make the remote ID technology and the equipment. So as of right now, there's, there's nothing to be able to put into these aircraft. We're not sure if it's gonna be a firmware upgrade, a hardware upgrade, a firmware and a hardware upgrade. We're not really sure yet. So with that said, the answer is no, it's not compatible with remote ID yet because there is no system to be compatible with. So with that said, we are selling the M30. We have them on our website. We have them in stock. They are ready to ship out the door. We can give you also an official quote if you want. You can reach out to us directly. You wanna ask us any questions about this aircraft, put them down in the comment section below or give us a call directly. We're carrying all the different accessories for the M30 as well. And I hope that our thoroughness of this video shows you how experienced we are to be able to handle any technical thing that comes up. And when you purchase your aircraft from us, you have that 24 seven support and we do answer the phone all the time and we are there to help all of our customers. So, and again, we have the knowledge and experience. If you need somebody to train you on site with this aircraft, we can train anybody anywhere in the country and we are a full one-stop shop for anything that you need for drone related needs. So with that said, thank you very much for watching this video and let us know if you have any questions again, we will talk to you soon. Thanks again.